We have invited Andy Fordyce to share the US experience and knowledge of the Endless system. So thanks Andy for being with us today. Um, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, it's great to be with you guys here today and, and uh, just share some thoughts with the, the Canadian team from the US perspective with the Endless Weed Control System and the success that we've had with it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Andy Fordyce and uh, I've been the portfolio marketing leader for our trait herbicide business in the US. So that's uh, accountability for all Enlist herbicides, Enlist One and Enlist Duo, as well as our other trait herbicides, our glyphosate business, as well as Fexofan in the US. Um, I've, I've been involved with Enlist uh, since 2011 or 2012, um, as intimately involved with our launch in our uh, the Enlist Weed Control System in cotton, uh, in the in the across the cotton belt in the, in the South, our first traded crop. So been with Enlist for a very long time and excited to see where it is today. Good, but let's, before we dive in in the Enlist system, let's, let's start, well, with an heavy and complicated question, but like, could you summarize the weed resistance situation in history in the United States? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. It's a, it's a complicated history and uh, one that goes back quite a long time. So in the mid nineties, uh, Roundup changed the game, right? In the Roundup Ready trade system. Uh, and it, it allowed farmers to farm away they've never been able to really do before. And they used that system to its fullest, uh, but we really got away from a lot of the principles that kept weed resistance at bay. We became reliant on a glyphosate only system uh, really across all our major crops, cotton, corn, soybeans across the, uh, the US. And um, you know, 10, 12 years ago now, we started to see resistance pop up because of just the single use of glyphosate over the course of time. And it really started in the Southern US and in our cotton markets, but it is really predominant across multiple different weed species uh, uh, really and across several different states uh, in, in the US from pigweed to water hemp to mare's tail, uh, the, the weed resistant weeds that are uh, to glyphosate are, are, are prevalent everywhere. And the Enlist Weed Control System allows farmers to continue farming the way they want to farm. Um, yeah, we still have the glyphosate trait uh, that's available in, in E3, but bringing in uh, 2,4-D and particularly 2,4-D choline as well as glufosinate gives farmers multiple options uh, for um, different modes of action. And when you combine that with, with solid stewardship and uh, residual chemistry, uh, we can keep fields just as clean as a farmer needs to keep them clean to produce top yields. So what would be the estimated percentage of endless acres and, and of those acres, like what percentage would be sprayed with the technology? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So um, in 20, we, we really launched the Enlist E3 uh, system in, in the United States when we received Chinese and Philippines import approvals, our, our last import approvals prior to the 2019 season. So uh, we had, uh, by the time we got approvals, it was already late winter going into early spring, uh, but we got a few million acres of E3 out in the marketplace uh, in, in 2019, which helped escalate our, our demand and usage into 2020. Um, in 2020 and soybeans, we had roughly 20% of the US soybean market was planted to enlist E3 soybeans. 20% of our market, just for round numbers, if there's 85 million acres of soybeans in the US, that was 17 million acres of E3 soybeans that were planted in the US. In addition to that, um, phytogen cottonseed um, is, uh, is our brand of, uh, of cotton. And there was a couple million acres of cotton out there as well that had the enlist E3 soybean trait. And again, about you know 20 plus percent of the market uh, was planted to enlist cotton as well. Um, and as we go forward into 2021, we're projecting that at a minimum, we're gonna see 30% of the market in the US go to Enlist E3, maybe as much as 50%, depending on uh, individual territory and market. And of those acres, what we've seen consistently uh, since we launched in, Enlist and Cotton and in, into Soybeans is we're treating 75, 80% of those acres with uh, Enlist herbicides uh, today. 
our, our number one product we use in the U.S. is in list one and uh, really a, a, a different regulatory reasons than, than what you'd have in the Canadian market. We, we have a tank mix website we have to use regulatory wise uh, and in list one is um, you can just get far more tank mix products with it in the U.S. than than, uh, than you can with Enlist Duel, but just uh, tremendous success and, uh, and and a lot of growers utilizing the technology and, and then spraying Enlist herbicides over it. It's it's a, a number one choice for them. And how, how was initially the technology perceived by grower? Because like kind of the market gaps maybe to resistant weed, like can you dive in a little bit there? Yeah, so uh, the, the technology initially, uh, people are like, man, well, we've been using 240E for, my grandpa used it 40, 50, <laughs> 60 years ago, right? So that, you know, there's a, there's a certain level of comfort around 240E, particularly around soybeans uh, versus, versus dicamba, uh, where, I mean, we've all seen the sensitivity to dicamba here uh, the last several years, and, and that was evident even before uh, we launched the system. But um you know, growers, uh, there's been a certain comfort level with 2,4-D uh, and, and how people have been using it through the years. Uh, and then we had to do an, ex even though there was that, that comfort level there, we still have embarked on a tremendous education and stewardship initiative to, to inform growers that, look, our 2,4-D choline that you find in our enlist herbicides isn't the same as an amine or an ester. Right, the volatility is 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 near zero. The you got low potential for physical drift, and uh, and it, it, with with Colex D, that's that's made that happen. Um, and once we've proved it to growers that it's no kidding, a different type of two four D, that's really helped escalate our spray rate and um, off target movement incidents of of enlist uh, across the U S are are really incredibly small right um and um but the, the biggest testament i would say to that is you're not you, you don't really see any any news articles about 240 drift like you do with, with dicamba right i mean it's been yeah. pretty quiet and we've been on millions of acres uh since since we've launched so it's the chemistry is doing exactly what what it needs to do and the uh, uh growers have 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 really adopted it well. Um, and a lot of that's to, thanks to our R&D group and technology uh, there, but also the tremendous education and stewardship efforts that have happened to make that make that go. Because you mentioned cotton uh, earlier uh, quite often, and it, it's a big market in the US. Yes. And I understand that cotton is very sensitive to 2,4-D, way more sensitive than soybean is. Yes. Here in Eastern, in Eastern Canada, it's more of the um, IP soybean market that is very important. So we will see an IP soybean field next to an uh, endless soybean field. In, so could you speak to some known example of like laboring crop situation or? Sure, absolutely. So in, in across our, our cotton market, there's you know, round numbers, 10 to 12 million acres of cotton in any given year, right? I mean, the market fluctuates depending on commodity prices because those farmers in the South can plant cotton or peanuts or soybeans or corn. So depending on the market price, that there's pretty quite a bit of volatility in the acres. Uh, but but as, as you mentioned, um, cotton is incredibly sensitive to 240. Um, as an example, cotton is the 240 uh, as dicamba is the soybeans. I mean, they're, it's that it's that sensitive. Um, so what we have to do in particular in the South, uh, and we've been incredibly successful with this because like I said a little bit earlier, about 20% or so of the market has planted enlist cotton. That means 80% of the market is non-enlist cotton, uh, which is the overwhelming majority of it out there, which is highly susceptible to 240. So that's you know, about eight, nine million acres of non-enlist cotton. And when you go to Lubbock, Texas, that's where roughly half of the U.S. cotton market resides is in, in the area around Lubbock, Texas, which is very flat country, incredibly windy country, 
out there as well, and it's cotton on cotton year after year. Um, we've found success with Enlist because of the properties of 240 Coley, of how it will, will, will stay down, and it has low potential for physical drift, um, ultra low volatility, but you still have to keep uh, common sense and use the label, right? I mean, if the wind is blowing towards a sensitive crop, like, like non-enlist cotton, that's a do not spray. I mean, there is no buffer that will save you, right? I mean, it is a do not spray scenario if the wind is blowing towards a sensitive crop. Now, if that wind is blowing away from that sensitive crop, then you can spray. It's, it's no problem. And we've not had uh, incidences where uh, a, a grower has sprayed when the wind was blowing away from a non-enlist cotton and it's and it's volatilized and gone back to, to that adjacent crop uh, that was, um, I guess, uh, upwind, if you will. So um, if we can do it in cotton and stay out of the newspapers, I I'm confident in what you'll be able to do in Canada uh, around your sensitive crops. Just simply make sure the wind's not blowing towards it. Um, you're using the right labeled nozzles and, um, and, and, and you'll, you'll, be in, you'll be in great shape because the chemistry, it, it's amazing what, what it will do and how different it is than amines and esters. We'll be in great shape to kill those hard to kill weeds. Absolutely. So Absolutely. like for us, I'm thinking of Waterham is getting hot, hotter and hotter by the, well, we have now 20, group 27, which is mesotrium, so it's quite new for us in Eastern Canada now. I'm thinking Canada fleabane, ragweed. With the drought this weed, uh, this uh, last year, lamb's quarter was a hard one to, to kill too. So um, can you share your experience of the endless systems like on on a few specific weeds? Yeah, so um, 240 does a great job on, on, on all those, but you know, the system's more than just 240 too. I mean, just like we talked about at the intro, if if we just go to a straight enlist system where you use enlist one or enlist duo, while enlist duo is great because you get two active ingredients in a in a convenience of, of, of one jug, but if we rely strictly on that, uh, we're back right back to the drawing board. So that's that's the beauty of the E3 system. You've got 240, you've got glyphosate, and you've got glufosinate. In, in your back pocket to to be able to incorporate multiple modes of action on that on that farm. So um, while enlist and herbicides are, are are terrific tools, we have to be cognizant, and we're doing this in the U.S. of continuing to use multiple modes of action so that we can keep weeds are at bay, keep weeds at bay, and, and fields clean, and um, to make sure that the longevity of the trait is there because there's. There's really nothing to date that's that's quickly approaching behind it in terms of another trait solution, right? So we've got to keep this one viable, and the way to do it is with with multiple modes of action for a, to, to group, for sound resistance management. So uh, doesn't matter what the weed species is, if it's lamb's quarters or mare's tail, Palmer amaranth, whatever. Um, multiple modes of action is the way. Two four D is a is is an incredible product um, and Enlist One and Enlist Duo can do a great job, but they shouldn't shoulder that burden all on their own. They need they need other 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 products out there too to, to help keep the longevity of the of the chemistry viable for, for a long, long time. Yeah, let's learn from that glyphosate introduction <laughs> situation. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I understand like there's a lot, it's, it's a success, like the endless system in the US, a, a lot of licensees, um, uh, a lot of offer. So to, to kind of wrap up the, all this good information, like why do you think endless system has been such a success in the US and is continuing to be a success? Yeah, so licensees, I mean, it's certainly every Corteva brand is carrying Enlist E3 uh, soybeans, but we have um, a little over 120 different licensees in the U.S. that have taken a, a license to Enlist E3 that are are selling it in the marketplace uh, today, and that's that's a key reason why we think we can get to at least 30% of the market 
to plant and list E3 soybeans in 2020. Again, maybe as much as 50%, depending on, on the individual geography uh, that you're in. But, but why have those licensees uh, taken to it? Well, it's grower level demand, right? I mean, their customers are saying, this is what I want to plant, right? And, and why are they saying that? Because um, through the last couple of years and then the, the demand that was built even before we had all the appropriate import approvals, the, the trait does and the chemistry that supports it does exactly what we said it was going to do. And um, it, I mean, that's that's um, maybe the, it, it's, it's an incredible thing to think about, right? That we're just we're delivering the promise. Right. Uh, and uh, the expectation that was there that was really high, but we're delivering on that. And the chemistry solutions that we have with enlist herbicides in the U.S. are a, 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 a fundamental reason why the enlist trade is successful because the chemistry is doing what it was designed to do. And there's a lot of uh, dicamba hangover in the U.S. right, and, and headaches that's that's come from that. Uh, and the enlist system, uh, from a regulatory perspective, it just doesn't have the headaches. And, um, and, and that, and growers just don't want to deal with that anymore. And uh, the ability to have the freedom to spray, um, not having to worry about cutoff dates, um, having uh, additives to, to, to a, a tank to help reduce drift and volatility. I mean, it, it, the chemistry does what it said it was going to do. And, and, and that's why we've been successful in the U S and, not to mention the the other trait components with it, with Liberty and glufosinate and and uh, glyphosate. Um, it, it's just a complete package uh, that farmers have really adopted, and, and they like it. And uh, that's been what's successful for uh, is because the growers that plant the trait like the trait. They they like what they've seen with the chemistry, and that's just uh, had our licensees gobble up as much seed supply as they can uh, so that we can get it planted on as many acres as possible. So um, major stewardship effort, a lot of education, doesn't happen overnight, uh, but we've had a lot of things that's gone into that and a lot of people on the team that help make it the success that it is. And we really look forward to a, a strong 2021 growing season, which will just make that uh, acreage expectation even higher in 2022. Awesome. This is a lot of very good information, very good knowledge. I think we're going to use that for our own stewardship and uh, a learning process. So it is much appreciated. Yep. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today, Andy. Any last word of advice? No, no. Good luck to you. Uh, we certainly uh, wish you the best. And we know that uh, based on the experience that we've had in the U.S. really since the launch of Enlist Cotton uh, in in 2012 or, or, or 13, that if we can do it there and then we can be as successful on tens of millions of acres in the Midwest on soybeans, uh, that, that you can certainly do it too in, in Canada. So, and, and we'll be watching, right? And, uh, and, and rooting for your success along the way. So good luck to you. Thanks. Yes, thank you.